bring it to Bummy. Okay, I'm back, folks. I've got something on the screen. This is two-second exposure. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. I have never looked at this object with this telescope or this camera. So whatever it's good or bad, it doesn't matter for me. I'm just doing the test to see how well it's going to work. So we could be all disappointed, including me and you people, or we could all say, wow, well, pretty cool. So it's part of research. It's part of science. Let's try it and let's experiment. Gonna stop the exposure and I think I'm gonna try a much longer exposure and I'm afraid I'm gonna have to go to uh, in the neighborhood of about 45 seconds, maybe 40 seconds. Yeah, maybe 45. I don't know if I got a 45 second. Uh, but anyways, let's try it out. All right, are you ready? Okay, let's go. We're going to see an ugly picture, so give me a moment to adjust everything. That means I'm going to need to lower the gamma and put it back as close as possible. Because we're not dealing with two seconds, we're not dealing with 10 seconds. Going to have much longer exposure. So let's put the gamma at default, which is uh, 1.0. And I believe the histogram is going to have to be lowered as well because this is going to be a long one. And I'm not going to use a dark field correction yet until I see what the image is going to look like. So let me, let me bring this down about 150 here on the histogram. And uh, let's pay attention what the result's going to be. So here it comes. I don't know if it's going to be nice or not. Okay. Hang on a sec, folks. I hope I'm on the right galaxy here. Uh, we're going to need to increase that a little bit more. Just bear with me for a moment, guys and girls. Need to export. Um, got a dark somewhere of 40 seconds, I believe it is. Oh, that, there you go, dark. All right, that'll do. This one will do. Okay. Oh, I didn't want to save that. What the heck have I done? It's not export, it's import. All right. There you go. Let's go get that same dark again. I just made a little mistake. And I blame this on the mosquito that entered in my ears earlier. Okay, there you go. And let's activate this dark field. And I'm pointing uh, towards east. So we got light pollution over there, of course, and the moon. And the glow we're seeing all over the place is based by the moon. This is a 45 second exposure. We still got some very, very low noise. There you go. All right. We're getting there. Tracking's not so good. I'm using an EQ mount tonight. That's right. What? An EQ mount? You? That's right. Finally works good after how many years? Well, all right, let's go adjust the, oh, this is not the right galaxy. What the hell have I done? Hang on, folks. I'm on the wrong ones. Not it. Just a sec. It's not the one I wanted to go for. All right, hang on. Yeah, the moon glow is starting to affect us big time here. We're going towards right the moon at the moment. And of course, it's very, very small because it's a much larger chip. Okay, hang on, folks. Let me uh, go do the correction here. I'm going to stop the uh, air field correction for a moment. And I'm going to go to the right galaxy that I'm supposed to go at. 
is incorrect. Just a moment. Just hang on. Back to two seconds. All right, let's start that up. That's a galaxy that I want to go at. Not that one. This is not it. Like I sent M13 the other day and it went into another fabulous cluster completely different than what I was planning. So you gotta like EQ mounts and you gotta hate them too. Okay, I think this is the one here I was looking for. There's two of them, actually. <clears throat> I hope they're there. We should see two galaxies there. So, let's uh, start over again here. And we don't need to go that high. I think we need to go about 20 seconds, maybe 30 at most. Okay. I want to see if I'm still broadcasting. Yep, yeah, okay, good. Okay, the sec, folks, the moon's going to interfere. When you see that green, that's the moon entering into the scope. Lower that guy a little bit. And we're going to adjust the Mr. Brown, the weaver. Ah. That's what I want to see. 7339 and but of course, we've got the moon. So what you're looking at is the moon. Look at the center. We've got a vertical galaxy, 7339. And the other one is 73. Oh, I forgot what the other number is. But the center one is 7339. So these are two galaxies side by side pretty well. And let me go get uh, the dark field correction. But now... Because of the moon, uh, this is nearly full moon. You got to think about this. Let's go get the uh, dark frame here of, uh, not the dark frame, the, the dark field, 12 bits. There you go. That's the guy we need. Let's go get that. Activate this guy and let it rip. So if we cannot get rid of this glow, it's obviously because of the moon glow is entering right into the scope at the moment. So if we would have a moonless night, you'd be able to see that a lot better. Much, much, much better. See, we're on M13, where well, we're opposite of the moon, and this time we're quite closer to the moon. Yes, 7332, 7339. Thank you, Jack. That's exactly what it is. Two of my favorite galaxies. They're still galaxies. Anybody can see that, and it's cool. It's really nice. Okay, yeah, the uh, the glow, the moon glow went way too much. Yeah, they're not all that deep, but still, when do you see a CMOS do galaxies? In order to do galaxies, you need to see in the infrared. A sensor that sees in the infrared will detect faint, faint galaxies, and this is what we're proving here tonight. Obviously, because of the moon glow, uh, it's getting pretty ugly. I don't have filters, I don't have any of this, and uh, fortunately, that's what we're looking at. So we're going to go with the saturation a bit and try to combat this uh, green uh, hue that we're having at the moment, caused by the moon. We're only about, hang on, let me go. 10, 20, we're about 20 degrees, 25 degrees from the moon, so... We are getting a lot of the moon glow entering. This is why it looks the way it is now. Oh yeah, me too. Uh, it's it's, it's a different. The big points are there, and you get to see the different size of them. That's because the pixel is small. But normally, Connie, when you have a small pixel, you lose a lot of sensitivity. And what I'm impressed here, what I really like seeing, is 
the different sizes of stars, that means the dynamic range of the electronics associated with the sensor is working. It's well calibrated. Same thing with the DS2.3+. Plus. Don't forget, we are looking at a wide field of view, very wide field of view. All right, I'm trying to lower a bit of the saturation so we get rid of the screen a little bit in the background. That's the, the moon. The moon glow is giving us a hard time at the moment. So, of course, we're not going to be able to get the best out of it. Well, it is on at the moment. That means the dark regression is taken when you cover the scope, so it takes an account any of the defects such as hot pixels, warm pixels, darker and noise, and glow, that will subtract it on automatically. However, you cannot remove the room uh, glow because it's entering after. Here, I just lowered the saturation a little bit to see if we could uh, no, I didn't help enough, obviously, yet, but that's what's happening. Let's lower the ground a little bit to see what's gonna happen. Might be able to get the uh, background a little bit darker. So well, let's wait another 30 seconds. There's, uh, there's basically two adjustments you got to go for gamma and histogram. That's it. Sometimes it's beyond control with the full moon tonight, tomorrow. Full moon, I believe. It's on. It's moon. So we're like one day away. What is this? 99%? 98.5%. There you go. So I lowered the gamma. That means lower the gain. And you get to get a little bit darker, but it's uneven. And this is a shadow view of the dome and the telescope tube. And the light is entering unevenly inside of this of the scope uh, from the moon. Uh, the white balance is beautiful. Good idea there, Doug. I wouldn't want to do it while we're taking a long exposure. I would rather lower what we don't like. So basically what we're seeing is more green which is caused by the moon glow. So what we do is slide down, instead of a white balance, lower the green a little bit. Let's see what's going to happen on the next refresh. Let's check it out so we can bring back that black side. But usually with the gamma, you'll be able to adjust the background quite, quite well. But we're dealing with the moon. This is the moon doing this, this effect here. There we go. This is black. Now that we got more black, we get to go with the gamma, and now we're going to increase the gamma. All right. Let's bring that up a little wee bit darker. A little bit at a time goes a long way. Yeah, I know the Chinese are off uh, for next week, so I tell you, they got more vacations than Canadians and Americans put together. There we go. By lowering the gamma, we're just trying to gain back the darkness that we want. But we're also going to lose a little bit of the of the gain. We got a dark area on the left, a brighter a little bit more over the center, and that is caused by the moon. The moon glow entering into the skull on an angle. Nonetheless, uh, we get to see uh, fairly well, so that's uh, working quite good. Let's bring back the. Uh, Saturation a little bit. We're probably going to get green again, and this is caused by the uh, the moon. You got to keep in mind that all sensors always shows more green. Their final AD conversion is always stronger in the green. All sensors are more sensitive in the red, but at the factory the way they're made, the green is more dominant. So by lowering that a little bit, you get to get a fairly good uh, balance. But because of the moon, there's not much that we can do. We can do galaxies very well. This is only a 30-second exposure. It's very short. It's not long at all. If we would have the moon, we'd definitely be able to go a lot longer than that and get a lot more gain and we would get a much, much, much better picture. But the point is this. To detect galaxies, you need to be sensitive in the infrared. CMOS are normally not sensitive in the infrared as much as CCDs. CCD rules in this case. Not with this sensor. That, that Panasonic Mekovicon is certainly uh, the winner when it comes to that. 
it covers way up into the infrared as easy as down in the UV. The well-balanced sensor. This is a plate version of that, they call it. I hope some of you do go on the Mountain Cam Yahoo group and go read the article and go read the, you know, the two links about this fantastic technology. I'm hoping, I'm just hoping and praying somebody from Cloudy Clown takes that link and go post it there to educate a couple of people that needs to be fed information so they could understand what's going on. Oh, 
whatsoever. Google it. But anyways, to come back to, in all seriousness here, the um, probably what we're seeing here tonight, of course, because of the moon it's very difficult to show that to you people. But I tell you one thing, next time, I would certainly like to do this again without the moon. I'm kind of glad the moon is out because it gives us a, the ability to test this. What are we fighting here with? It's the moon. The moon goes really, really strong. And of course, the camera being sensitive the way it is, it's going to pick up the glow even more. However, there is something that I've never tried yet, folks. And I can see the moon rising above my house. I would like to try the moon. Uh, I've never tried the moon with this. And tonight is a, certainly uh, is a way that we could do it. And uh, I would say that's the one the moon. What do you think? I think we will. Here's the uh, beauty of this. We can bring that down further low. We have an horrendous at uh, 0.5 half a second, which is way too much. Let me put everything back to default. So there's a button there. It's called default. I'm going to go back to Instagram at default. We are going to put back everything here at default. There you go. And we are going to lower the gain. The gain's at 20 all the way up. So let's bring this down. Oops, hang on a sec. And uh, let me stop this guy first. 